is what, what's a disruptive technology? What changed the way we live and what we study and how we study, how we shop? The internet. The internet, thank you. The internet was a disruptive technology. Beforehand, we did things very, very differently. Now we know we have to do things very, very differently in terms of green. But the internet was the same everywhere in this country. Green is not. A disruptive technology for green in Iowa, where we're talking about alternative fuels, is very different than New York City. A disruptive technology in France, where more than half of the energy is produced by nuclear power, is very different than this country. A disruptive technology in Brazil, where more than half of the gasoline is produced by sugarcane, is very different than it is in the United States. So the first thing that makes the green movement in terms of workforce development so difficult is that it means <coughs> different things to different people in different places. So we have very different standards, we have very different opportunities based on geographic area and based on culture. We have not built a nuclear power plant in this country that was license after Three Mile Island, and now we have to start looking at that again. So it's a tremendous cultural change for us. The third thing that you can say about green jobs is that they really are dependent on the sciences. Science, technology, engineering, and math are the foundation skills for most green jobs. Difference, the, the variations might be in terms of things that come from the traditional green movement that we spoke about the forestry, the ecotourism, the green resorts that abound all over the world. You can go on vacation and do your stuff in a chemical toilet and pay $1,000 a night for it. So, most of the career positions are fundamentally rooted in the sciences. And when we talk about green jobs today, we're talking about that. We're talking in this first phase of green jobs about skilling up, about adding value to what already exists. So if you're an interior designer, the American Association of Interior Design, ASID, has green interior design criteria. If you're an architect with something called LEED certification, where buildings are rated according to their environmental sensitivity. And lead certification means tax incentives, uh, and it means higher fees to the architects. So people who are already in these fields, we call, we say that they're skilling up, that they're getting an additional skill to supplement their professional competency so that they can go out and charge more money. Now at Kingsborough, we run what we call Green Advantage Workshops, and this is for women and minority general contractors who are going out and building small buildings. They're not putting up uh, you know, the World Trade Center kind of stuff, but they're putting up smaller projects where there are tremendous tax incentives for winning bids for being green and tax advantages for building those buildings. And by taking this Green Advantage training, they can by passing the cert certification examination, claim to uh, be proficient in this and again, charge more money for those services. So this first generation of green jobs, as, as you can see uh, on the slide, really focus on skilling up. It's doing things that you're already doing from a green perspective. It's clear, as I said, that New York City is different than Iowa in terms of what the green opportunities are. The mayor and Plan YC has set very ambitious goals for the city. There was a story in this morning's Times that sets aside a couple of billion dollars to start converting buildings to green specifications. And that in itself will result in 2,000 jobs over the next 10 years in the city of New York. Well, who's doing that? Who's doing those things? Well, people who are already in the workforce are going to be acquiring the additional skills to supplement what they already have. And 
and they will be the first wave of people who do that. You know, if you look around this college, the people who have been around here for a while and are involved in technology, they didn't major in computer science because there was no such thing. They were liberal arts majors, they were accountants, they were people who had a facility for that disruptive technology. And the same thing will be true about these green jobs. We don't have people who have begun to study the foundation skills in green. Courses are just being infused with green content. Lori Riley is here and she'll talk a little bit, maybe, I don't know whether she will or not. But we are looking to build capacity within CUNY to train people. This takes tremendous investment in terms of labs and equipment and training professors. There are not very many people who know very much about this to create that skilled workforce for these jobs for the future. In our urban environment, we're really talking about weatherizing buildings. We're talking about building performance as a major area where the green workforce that doesn't exist will grow. If we can save on our heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, if we can have smarter lighting systems, if we can use better materials, more environmentally sensitive materials in our buildings, this will not only produce a cleaner environment, but it will lower the cost of doing business. And at the same time, create these green jobs that everybody has so much fun talking about, but has such a hard time really getting their arms around. The other area here in New York is alternative energy or renewable energy sources. And we're talking about solar, wind, tidal in some places, not New York. Um, and CUNY, through the Center for Sustainable uh, Energy up at Bronx Community College, is really the lead in New York City for solar energy. And there's a whole new profession that's arisen uh, called photovoltaics, where you've got to do wiring to get the energy from those panels that we've all seen on roofs. You've got to get that energy to where it's needed to be, to be used from where it's being produced. We're beginning to train people in those areas. Here at Kingsborough in the fall, we'll have our first courses in building performance and, and introductions of PV wiring. Never had this stuff before, and it's really thanks to Laurie and the folks at the university uh, in helping us build our capacity here at Kingsborough, not only to raise awareness about the importance of the environment, but really to introduce these green collar jobs to, to our students. City, believe it or not, is looking at wind energy. That's not your professors. You've seen all of these things with you know, these kind of fancy, they look like propellers revolving around. And there's been some talk about putting them on bridges and buildings. And there are studies underway now to determine whether that's economically viable. And the answer is probably not, but I hope somebody is getting money for doing the study because that's another green job, after all, both literally and figuratively. So in our urban environment, we're talking about buildings, we're talking about retrofitting old buildings to new standards, and we're talking about new buildings, both in terms of design, architecture, maintenance, measurement, and assessment. We're talking about alternative energy and how we use it efficiently and how we bring it from the site where that energy is produced to where the energy is used. And we're talking about transportation, you know? How many of you have cars? You drive to Kingsborough? You're not green. You are some other color. <laughs> no. Does anybody use gas oil here? Or does anybody use frying oil for their car or anything like that? Probably not. Because here's another example where some technologies are ahead of others. Some, in some states, you can buy vehicles, but you can't buy the fuel for them. I gave up, I'm, I'm really a green person. I gave up my car two years ago. I live in Manhattan. I have something called Zipcar. And I got this email from Zipcar this morning. It says, Hi, Stuart. Never leave your lights on when you leave the room. Forget to recycle. We understand that nobody is perfect. And that's why we're inviting you to confess your echo sins at Zipcar New York.